Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here. I'm bringing you another updated uh, tutorial on how to control uh, IR devices uh, that maybe aren't smart or as smart uh, using a uh, global cache uh, network IR device. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, um, especially if you have some devices in your house that are uh, not very smart, but yet you don't want to have to spend a whole bunch of money and replace them all with smart devices right now. This is a little bit cheaper, easier way to set this up. Uh, so let's get started. At my house, I use the Global Cache WF2IR. Um, it's a wireless infrared network device. It's not that hard to set up. Once you get on the network, it runs pretty smoothly. Um, the great thing about Global Cache is they also have a huge database of devices uh, with all the IR codes that you'll need in order to control those devices. And I'll put the links down here in, in the, uh, the description. So when you first go to this website, you have to set up an account. So let's do a search for a Sony TV. And well, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to look for one in here. If you don't want to get all the codes all at once, you can choose to get just one or two codes, depending on what you're searching for there. And uh, then we can go over to our inbox and our email, and let's see what those codes look like. So just to give you an idea here, I just uh, requested all the codes for that device, and you can see here it's listing them all out one by one, and we'll be able to use those codes in our Home Assistant configuration. All right, so in our uh, configuration.yaml file, uh, down here at the bottom, I'm just going to add a line in for remote. So this will be using the remote component. Uh, platform will be iTAC. <laughs> Name will be whatever you want to call it. Uh, host is the IP address of that uh, global cache device. Devices. All right, this is where you're going to be uh, setting up all your codes for all the different equipment that you're going to be controlling with the global cache device. Um, so you give it a name, right, this one will be the TV, uh, con address, so that's connect, uh, connection address, it wants to know what port you have, uh, or, or you know, what port you have the cable plugged into that is going to be controlling that device. So if you have an IR blaster that will be controlling multiple devices on port 3, then of course your connection address will be 3. If you're going to be controlling just one with a little repeater, then you'll put, you know, connection address one. <clears throat> all right, so here are commands. These are all the commands that we're going to control or configure for the TV. So let's do one. We're going to call it on. And uh, data. This will be where we put in the IR code. Just going to copy and paste it in there from the email.
And let's go ahead and do another command and we'll make this one to turn the TV off. Again, we're just going to copy and paste this in there. Now let's go ahead and scroll up to the uh, script section. We're going to create a couple of scripts that we can test this uh, these new uh, remote commands out with. So I'm going to create one called TV on. Let's give it an alias, living room TV on. Service uh, for these will be uh, remote.send underscore command. Data template. All right, the entity ID will be the remote we just set up, so it'll be remote.tv. And the command we called it on. And then again, we're just going to list that uh, device again. We'll say remote.tv. Not sure why you have to have the entity ID and the device, but I know it doesn't work properly if you don't have both. And let's go ahead and create a script to turn it off as well. So we'll do the same thing, alias, uh, living room, TV, dash off. Uh, sequence. Again, the service will be remote.send underscore command. Data template. And really, it's all, all pretty much the rest of this is going to be the same. It's the ID will be remote.tv. Uh, the command this time will be off. The device again will be remote.tv. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And we will restart Home Assistant for those changes to take effect. And give that a little bit to come back up. All right, so over here and our web front end, now that everything's back online, I got uh, the TV I'm using is a smart TV um, or semi-smart. You still have to turn it on manually, so I got a ping going. Let's go ahead and hit that on script. And let's see if the ping changes here. And there we go. As you can see, the TV is turned on. It's now on the network and responding to ping. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, give it a second to respond to that. And as you can see, the pings have stopped, uh, so it's not getting a response back anymore. So it looks like it is pretty much done.
All right, that is the end of this video. Uh, again, it wasn't super hard to do or anything. Um, pretty easy to set up. Like I said, I really like the iTac devices. Those Global Cache uh, network IR devices are great. Uh, I love the fact that they have that huge database for you to be able to pull down all your codes from. I hope you liked the video. If you do, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up in the comments below. And if there are any videos out there that you'd like to see that I don't already have out there, again, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.